Did you think that healing is impossible given everything you went through? Are you tired of toxic relationships and living in trauma? Or perhaps you may be the friend or family member of someone dealing with trauma. Well, guess what? You have come to the right place. Welcome to the Trauma Overhaul Podcast, a weekly safe space where we engage in meaningful conversations to help you understand and heal from trauma. On this show, you will hear from practitioners, experts, and healed survivors of trauma to give a well-rounded experience. I'm your host, Tiffany Singleton, a licensed psychotherapist located in South Carolina. Let's have the conversation. Hello, hello, hello. I am Tiffany Singleton, your host for the Trauma Overhaul Podcast. Welcome to the first episode where we'll be talking about trauma. What is trauma and what is its impacts? on lives. Trauma is the buzzword right now. We hear about it on social media. We see the reels on TikTok. But what exactly is trauma? I am so excited to share this space with you to have this conversation. I want to get started by making sure we discuss what trauma really is. It is important that we understand what it is in order to understand how we heal from it. Let's start by definition. Trauma is defined as a response following an event that is psychologically overwhelming, leading to resulting in shock, denial, and changes in the body, mind, and behavior. Trauma results from an experience such as something that is harmful or can be life-threatening. It has lasting adverse effects on your mental, physical, emotional and spiritual well-being. When we think about trauma, the first thing that comes to our mind may be someone that has gone to war or someone that has been in the military. But there are so many other events or incidents that can cause and result in trauma. Let's look at some examples. Abuse, a car accident, sexual violence, going to combat or war bullying, sexism, divorce, grief, or even a natural disaster, just to name a few. Traumatic events can happen to anyone, regardless of race, color, creed, age, gender. It is no respecter of persons. And when it happens, it can have lasting effects on someone's well-being. So let's talk about the three types of trauma. In this episode, we're going to talk about acute, chronic, or complex. When we say acute trauma, we're referring to a single event that causes distress or puts you in danger. An example of acute trauma can be, for instance, a car accident or a natural disaster, something that may occur just once in someone's entire lifetime. Chronic trauma is repeated exposure to a dangerous or stressful event. This can be bullying or domestic violence or any type of event that is ongoing and is repeatedly occurring in someone's space and to them. Complex trauma is repeated exposure to events that can cause distress or fear, such as sexual abuse, torture, Or in the example of some childhood experiences, chronic abandonment. When we think about trauma, those effects place a heavy, heavy burden on individuals, families, and even communities. Although many people may experience some type of trauma in their lifetime, not everyone is impacted. Whereas there may be some individuals that do experience that lasting negative impact. So you might be asking, okay, so what's the difference? Why some people, why some people not? This could include certain factors such as having a support system. Let's talk about an example. Let's say that there was someone that got bit by a dog when they were a teenager. 
But they had a parent standing in the yard at the same time who ran over immediately and rescued them from the attack, comforted them, took them inside and cared for their wound. That person is less likely to experience long lasting negative effects on their mental and emotional state because they had that support in that moment. Now let's look at the flip side of that. If someone is being attacked and no one is there to rescue them or to protect them or to move them out of harm's way in that moment, then that experience could be very traumatizing and have a long lasting impact on that individual. It's important for us to understand the nature and the impact as we explore the healing journey. There are symptoms to post-traumatic stress because stress overwhelms our nervous system. And so it comes out in certain symptoms that can be noticeable, some that might not be noticeable, but we'll just talk about a few. Some of the common ones may be fear, helplessness, dissociation. Dissociation refers to being disconnected from oneself and the world around them even forgetting about some of the time periods, forgetting about some of the events that even happened, having a memory loss in certain capacities. There could be changes in behaviors. There could be changes in attitudes. Depression and anxiety can very well set in. Blame and guilt can arise. Some individuals literally struggle with self-blame because in their minds, you may say, Well, I could have predicted that, or had I done X, Y, Z, then perhaps I would have prevented that from happening to me. There can be a loss of interest in activities, and emotional numbness can even be a result and a symptom. Not giving yourself permission to feel at all, whether it's happy emotions, whether it's sad, whether it's fearful, but just totally not being in touch with what you are feeling within yourself. Did you know that trauma can also be trapped in the body? Dr. Bessel van der Kolk has done an amazing work called The Body Keeps the Score, where he talks about how the brain is injured during a traumatic experience and how memory is impacted and how nervous systems are rearranged and how they are impacted. Let's talk about physical symptoms that can be a result from trauma. Increased heart rate, body aches or pains. Someone may feel tension in their body. Jumpiness or being startled very, very easily. May have difficulty sleeping. Excessive, excessive tiredness, which can be fatigue. Sexual dysfunction. ED, which is erectile dysfunction. Individuals may have problems being aroused or even being able to reach the orgasmic state during the sexual encounter. During extreme stress, it's important to note that the body and the mind become very overwhelmed and the nervous system engages what is called the coping mechanism or a trauma response, which is your four Fs. And I know you've probably heard them, which is your fight, flight, fawn, or freeze, which we will talk about more in depth in future episodes. So can trauma be treated? I know some of you may be wondering, saying, I've been dealing with this for years. I just think I'm just going to be living with this for the rest of my life. Can this really be treated? According to the American Psychological Association, some of the most effective treatments for trauma are cognitive behavior therapy, which is known as CBT, cognitive processing therapy, which is CPT, prolonged exposure, which is PE, and eye movement desensitization reprocessing therapy, which is known as EMDR. If you would like to 
commence one of these therapies, you can reach out to any licensed mental health professional that is located in your state, and they should be able to provide these services for you based on their trainings, experience, and their certifications. You may say, well, I've not really experienced any trauma, but perhaps you have a friend, a family member, or a coworker that may be living with trauma. You're wondering, okay, so how can I help them? I have to say that support is absolutely golden to anyone that is dealing with trauma and is working through their healing journey. Be compassionate, be empathetic, be understanding. Be supportive. One very important thing is understanding what is the trigger for this person. You may have a coworker that has a fear of riding in the car with anyone else driving, but perhaps you don't understand that that is a result of her post-traumatic stress from having been in a car accident while someone else is driving. Or there could be someone that is triggered by a garment. Maybe they could be triggered by seeing someone wearing a white hat. Perhaps their abuser or the perpetrator wore that garment or that article of clothing while they were being attacked. Therefore, the individual avoids anyone that has on a white hat. That is a trigger for this person. Triggers can include any sights, sounds, smells, thoughts, anything that causes the person to feel like they're reliving the experience all over again or experiencing the same emotions that were present during that time. So once we understand the triggers, it helps us as a supporter or as a support to avoid producing those triggers in the environment around the particular individual. This is a high level of trauma, what it is, what does it do, what is its impact on people's lives, and what can we do to be a support? Thank you for tuning in to this first episode of the Trauma Overhaul Podcast. In the future, we'll be having in-depth conversations about the nature of trauma, its impact, and what are some ways that trauma can be healed. Until next time, be well. Thank you for listening to the Trauma Overhaul Podcast. If you have future topic suggestions, please email me at info at flowwithtip.com. That's info at F-L-O-W-W-I-T-H-T-I-P dot com. Follow me on social media at Flow With Tip. And don't forget to hit the follow or subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Until next time, take care.